Uh, I believe, who's our next fund? Mucky. Mucky, right? I think we have Pirka on stage. Hand of applause. Listen, you, Mucky has some really good backers. I think one of the Tom, uh, the Tom Kivy family are backers. And you probably have some of the local VCs also back to you. I'm looking forward to find out more. Excellent. Uh, hopefully we can read all those text heavy you slides. It's a clicker somewhere. Oh, it's right it in front of you. You yep, know, founders occasionally have struggled with those clickers. So let's see yep. how you do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uno, dos, right. tres. Let's do this. Good afternoon. So my name is Pirka Palomäki. I've been an uh, entrepreneur. I've been an operator, an angel investor, and now for the past six years, a uh, founding partner with Maki. And we are and Helsinki, Finland, Seed States Fund, currently investing from our second 100 million fund into pre-seed, Seed States companies, and uh, typically writing 300k to 3 million initial checks. We have um, uh, a broad investment mandate, but we have a, a really keen interest into deep tech and brand-driven companies. Also, we have a global investment mandate, but we would call Nordics our home, so <laughs> most of our investments are happening in the, in the area. And uh, if we look at, it's just not myself, we have a team of 13 people, highly networked individuals, uh, really working on, uh, we are the, typically the first uh, VC investing into the companies, working on the company's brand, strategy, ESG topics, and also helping the founders being the sparring partner uh, through the good and the bad times. And typically we get asked, like, what do we mean by deep tech and brand driven? I, I think it's easier to explain with a few examples. Yeah. So um, here we have uh, three companies and uh, IQM, quantum computing, so quantum hardware, ultimate AI, AI, machine learning, large language models uh, based company. And then Onego Bio, uh, they are finding alternative, resource, alternative sources of proteins. So there's a very wide variety of companies that we invest in. And what I'm super excited about, that uh, uh, over the five and a half years, uh, we've invested in 47 companies. We already have one IPO under our belt and uh, two companies that got acquired. <coughs> and, uh, uh, we have been able to help our uh, portfolio companies raise almost uh, three quarters of a billion uh, euros and uh, with household names uh, of, of, uh, that you can see on the right hand side. And if, if you are challenging the norms and uh, you're building something new, defining new uh, category, defining brands, please be in touch with us. Thank you. Thank you. Right on time. Whoa, no, you even had a Early. buffer. This is the first time in history of this Pitch Confidential segment that one of the VCs yeah. had a little time left over. Hey, we usually like to talk about ourselves for ages. I was I about to say that. You <laughs> took it out of my mouth, man. Yeah. So here's a, I'm going to ask the hard hitting immediately. So you got featured in Vogue. Does that mean that you're on the cover, looking all beautiful? Well, no, it's more, more of our company. It's not us. So. <laughs> I see, I see, I see. So you have a quantum computing company in Vogue? Quantum computing in Vogue would be fantastic. I think then we really said that we're driving the brands there. But it, it's more, more on the other, other companies. Yeah. Listen, so with deep tech, right, I'm glad that you attempted to, for examples, give us what it is. But I want to have food tech, right? And yeah. you have quantum computing. Now we have these large language models. So all of that is deep tech. All of that is, yeah, I, I think there's a vague definition. I would say there's like a scientific deep tech companies that I define that there's typically might be a PhD or a doctor and might be kind of a research based spin off. And uh, then I would say they're kind of the lighter deep tech companies that are applying tech that I, I think most of the VCs, when they talk about deep tech, then they say, okay, I'll take, a, you know, I use OpenAI's LLM model and, and I slap a user interface. That's what we wouldn't call a deep tech. I see. So, so you would have to do kind of something, something in the uh, unique in the in the area. So it's good. We're starting with what it is not. That's good. We're narrowing down. This might take yep. a few years, but okay. Um, we'll finally figure out what it is. You know, I'm getting smarter. What do you think? I'm getting hydrated. <laughs> He's getting hydrated. Um, okay. Wait. Uh, is, was Valpas? Was yep. One of your investments. Valpas is one of them. Yeah. It's How? an IoT company. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Is here's this uh, C-level guy from Innovo, F-Secure. Yep. And then 
comes this deep tech company, which I guess takes care of bed bugs. Absolutely. At hotels. Yeah. Do you travel a lot? Yeah, but I've never. I mean, maybe we don't go to the same types of hotels. Well, you should you should probably check. There's actually a <laughs> website that is bedbug.org, and uh, you can actually check the hotels, and you'd be surprised. And do you know why it's not talked about? Why? Because the customers who come across them are paid to be silent. Yes. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I love how <laughs> so he's plugging it and redirecting yeah, the conversation. Unfo unfortunately, huh? it's like it's a it's a big problem, and uh, uh -huh. you know, uh, and you don't. It's something you want to carry back home. So, so this company, I guess, makes some kind of bed. Uh, they have a bed leg, so legs, basically. Yeah. And, uh, Replacement it, leg. Yeah. It sounds highly scalable. Yep. But let me, uh, let, me <laughs> let me go for it. What's the biggest failure? One of you is asking this, maybe on top, maybe here, maybe here. What is your biggest failure? You have 47 investments that you made, two trade sales and a lot. What's the biggest failure in investments uh, that what you've learned from? Already, I did my first angel investment uh, back before the dot com era crash that explains the gray hair a little bit. Absolutely. I, I think that well. the understanding, uh, the learning that I got out of that was that uh, sometimes you have the greatest idea. Uh, they were de uh, developing platform as a service uh, back in 99. They were just 10 years too early into uh -huh. the market. Obviously, the dot-com crash kind of didn't help, help into that. Yeah, that but from our cool. portfolio, so let's make it more kind of practical, I, I think a lot of the times, I think the uh, failures come that the teams, the founding team, starts to fight with each other. Oh, yeah? so, so unfortunately, that happens. And I, I think it's important that uh, you think about it. Everybody always says, OK, VCs are bad because we do these shareholder agreements, and there are these like, vesting clauses and everything. But those are really for the founding teams. If something goes bad, you actually then have some equity that you can probably get another person in there. These things do happen, so unfortunately. And, and that's something that kind of like you can't say that it's always kind of like dancing on the roses when you're building a startup. All right, here's a harder question. All but right. It's a fair question. I'm going to rephrase this a little bit. So do, whether you support female founders, but I would, how much of your portfolio has at least a company with one female co-founder? So many? 47 investments. How many of those teams contain at least one female co-founder? We have uh, Enfuse, as an example. I said in port, there's two uh, female co-founders. So CEO, co two co-CEOs. But what's the total share of your 47 investment <sighs> portfolio that good, include? Good question. We would you have don't that even on our website, this. but uh, it's probably, probably I would say, uh, 10-15%. 10-15%. Yep. Um, Yuri, when you were pitching uh, last time, last year, what was your number, if I may? Uh, I think 45. 45%? Yep. So interesting, 45%? Is that because the supply is like a top of the funnel problem? Well, What's, what is this? Well, it's, it's obviously, obviously you could say it's a, a, something that we need to also find the right level of uh, uh, deep tech companies. And uh -huh. unfortunately, I, I would say that uh, there's less, has been less female founders in that space. Uh, it's one of the things, but uh, it isn't the ex explanatory factor. But uh, I, we do have a number of those. Well, that's uh, we good. do you have, have at least a, some, right? We do have at least some, and at least we do have, uh, yeah. What, what, are your, what are your goals with uh, a new upcoming fund, if you have one here, in terms of improving that? So you have 10, 15% well, right now. Are you going to target that? Well, a lot of, lot of things that we do. One is that um, we've all, I think uh, unconscious bias is one of the problems that you have there. So all of us go through kind of training through unconscious bias. And, and I think diversity is more than gender diversity. So I think Absolutely. usually this gets into like, okay, female, male type of things. So I yeah, think yeah, they yeah. need to have old and young people, better to have different uh, backgrounds, different cultures. So I, I, I wouldn't make it. I, I think we invest in good teams uh, that we come across, but you can't do better deals than your deal flow. And that's what we need to work on, that we are approachable and, and people feel comfortable approaching us. So I think it's part, partly something that we need to do as well to make that improvement. Thank you, Kitos. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that's that's very fair. Um, I asked yesterday for a podcast uh, recommendation. Oh yeah. Um, we got a pretty good one. A couple Which of one? good ones. A couple of good ones. Uh, I remember 20, uh, 20 minute VC, your favorite, <laughs> Harry Stemmings. He loves his voice. <laughs> he's a he's a it's fan. It's my wake up call. Yeah. This is recorded, alarm. by the way. It's going to be it is yeah. being streamed and recorded. So Harry, if you're watching this, he loves your show. Uh, yes, uh, love doesn't it. like your voice. Uh, 
you know, different people have different kinds of voices. And Absolutely. We all sound funny to ourselves when we listen. We, oh, yes. uh, but we've got the podcast. What about a book? A book recommendation? Book recommendation. That would be, I think, uh, Hard Things About Hard Things is good. You know, that, that, that is a good book. Okay. Uh, one of my favorites. And, uh, How? and it, it just tells you about, tells you about basically, basically a lot of the things about, I think product management, there's a good sec section there talking about how you actually define a good product. I think there are like different, different uh, kind of subtopics within the book. Ben Horowitz, The yep. Hard Things About yep. Hard Things, excellent book. He has been that advising is. several companies, uh, highly recommended. Timo Tikka, obviously, Sten Tam Kivi uh, benefited from, from his advice. Uh, Pirko, you've been delightful. Thank you very much answering all the, all the questions. All Hand right. of applause for Pirko. Kitos, kitos, kitos. Thank you. I appreciate it. You've been a good sport, man. Thank you.